Hey, and welcome back to another tutorial. And today I'm going to show you how to do this setup with these uh, balloons with water or some stuff in them. Cool. All right, let's get started. I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to make a new geometry node here. And inside of here, I'm going to drop down a sphere. And I want that to be set to polygon. I want the frequency up to 7. So I have some resolution. And here is our balloon. So we need to do two things. First, we need to do the actual balloon. That will be the cloth. And then we need to also make the fluid. So let's do the fluid first. Let's create a Velon configure fluid. I'm going to drop it down there. Go in here. I'm going to set the resolution a little bit higher. And you might want it higher. But to keep this tutorial fast, let's just have it like this. And let's also just set some physical attributes for fun. That's viscosity and the surface tension. So, and that's it. Uh, one thing we need to do now, though, is if I merge these together, you will see, oh, not that one, like so. You see that the flue is actually going outside of the geometry. So let's also add a peak here. And in this peak, let's set it to something just a tiny bit, so it's a little bit bigger. Nice. All right. So let's start working on the cloth instead. So if you do the peak here, uh, and then I'm going to drop down a Velon configure cloth. Um, now it's cloth, but it's just going to be one single unit. And we want to break this up. So let's fracture it before we have it going into the Velon cloth. So I'm going to use an edge fracture. And uh, just by having that, we can let's have an exploded view to see what's happening. And now you can see it's uh, fractured up. One problem with the edge fracture, though, is that if you don't feed it with your own curves, it's always going to look the same. You don't have a seed value. And that is just because it's basically just a poly reduce inside of this that creates the curves. So if I go in here, you can see I have a poly reduce in here. So, so we need to find a way to vary this. So one thing we can do is have different pieces. So let's just put an expression here. I'm going to do a fit zero one. Have a randomize. I'm going to have the time here. Or let's do the frame. And then let's say if the random value is close to zero, then it's going to be six pieces. And otherwise, it's going to go up to. Let's move that down so you can see what I'm doing. If it's higher, it goes up to fourteen. So by doing that, now you have some variant. You can see it changed it a little bit. However, they are placed kind of similar. But what we're going to do later is that we're also going to randomize orientation when we are emitting the balloons. That is going to give us enough of variation, I think. But all right, so we have this. We're going down to the cloth. We also need to stitch these together or weld, I would say. So let's do a weld, Velon weld points. I'm just going to keep it as is here. Uh, and then I'm going to go and set the threshold to 1. Nice. OK. And then from that, let's start merging these two together. Let's do a merge like so. And we're going to merge the constraints like so. Now we are ready to simulate. So let's drop down a vellum solver. Of course, you can just use your own dopnet if you're feeling fancy, but I'm just going to do it like this. Let's go to the first frame. Uh, go in here. I'm not going to change much. I'm going to I'm going to increase the substeps to two, and I'm also going to have a ground plane. So I'm adding the ground plane, and by default, obviously, it's going to be in the center of the balloon. I don't want that because I want them to be emitted from this point. So I'm going to move this down. And let's see if this is working. So here is falling, 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 falling. Boom. Yes. Very nice. OK, right. So obviously, this is a good start, but it's not enough. We want to have more than one balloon. We also want it to shoot off in the air before it hits the ground. So let's get that working. I'm going to drop down a copy to point. And then I'm going to take this and uh, I'm going to copy this over. And in this case, I'm just going to have one point. But obviously, you can have more than one point. But I'm just going to have one point for this example. 
and I'm gonna have that going into this copy to point. And as you might recall, I was talking about having a variation by changing the orientation. And so let's drop down an attribute, randomize. Like so, I'm gonna set this to orient. And then I'm gonna set the dimensions to four because of the quaternion. I'm gonna set this to inside sphere. And then on this global seed, I'm gonna set this to the frame. So now the seed is changing on each frame and making the ball rotate, as you can see here. Nice. Okay. Let's have a null, and we're going to call that geo. We're going to have another null. We're going to call that constraints. And we're going to connect that to the constraints. Let's put that there. Move this down a little bit. Constraint. And I'm going to connect this back in here. And to have it to keep emitting, I'm going to double click the vellum solver and I'm going to drop down a vellum source. So here's that. And in the vellum source, I'm going to point to the geo, geo, and the constraints. I'm going to point them to the constraints. By default, it sets to only once, but that obviously won't work for us. So I'm going to set this to each frame. But I don't want it to emit on each frame because that would just mean that we're going to overlap each other. It's going to be too many balloons. So I'm going to animate this activation here with an expression. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to set the frame value f and I'm going to do a modulus. And then I'm going to, I want to have it every second. So I'm going to have it 24. So what is this doing? Uh, I'm going to set this to manual so you can see what this is doing. So if I set this to activation, you can see it will start counting up until it's reached 24 and it's just going to start over at zero and then it's going to keep doing that so know that each value is only going to happen once a second so then i can use that knowledge if i go to the first frame and set this to equals so if this value for example is equal to one then i want it to be activated and now you can see it's activated on the first frame zero 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 and then if i go to frame 25 it's going to be activated again and so on so let's get this back to auto update and i'm going to go out here and let's see what we have so now we have it falling boom next one is coming falling boom and so on I have a thing that you can't really see here, but it's a uh, kind of like an annoying thing. If you look at the first frame, it's too many polygons. And the reason is that it, it always gonna emit what I have connected into this one, but I also have one balloon emitted on the first frame. So just for the sake of it, let's also say it can't be the first frame. So, so if this value is equal to one and the frame isn't equal, to F start, then it's activated. So now you can see it's zero at the first frame. So then it, that is just gonna take the default uh, geometry coming in and then, but then it starts emitting them later. Perfect. So this is good, we are getting there. So to get the velocity then, we can just add a velocity here before the copy to point and then that velocity will be added to the simulation. So I'm going to use a second attribute randomize. And I'm going to put that up here. And uh, here I'm going to set this to V, which is the velocity. Again, I'm going to have this to inside sphere. I don't want it to go all kinds of direction. I always want it to be kind of upwards. So I'm going to set this cone angle. If I go to this here and put the visualizer, and uh, let's have it to vector v and also set the scale up so we can see it a little bit better it's just always going to go in that direction because i also need to go to the global seed and set this so i'm going to set this to frame like i did before and now it's being animated uh, the problem though is that it's going mostly in x and we don't want that so we're going to set the direction to y instead and now this is exactly what we want. If we go to the solver now, not much is happening. 
it seems to be the same. And that is just because it's not big enough to win over the gravity. So let's scale this value up. And you have this global scale here. Let's put that to 25. And now if I will go out to something like this and look at this, now you can see it's being shot off and then it's going to fall down. And we. Right, so looking at this, we can see there's one problem though, is that it's, I mean, it's very cool that these guys are hitting each other and get blown up, but then all these drops seem to just like destroy this balloon coming up there, and that doesn't feel correct. So uh, it feels like each drop is too heavy. So I'm gonna go to the balloon fluid here. I'm gonna set this to a much lower value, like 250. And sure, this looks so I, I mean, this looks much better, I think. You still have like a little bit of it, like hitting them and just being constrained there. So let's go to the Venom Solver and then just add these post collision passes. See if we can get rid of that little last bit there. And yeah, that looks much better. One last thing is that if you, you can't really see it from here, but if you go closer, you can kind of see the wells here. I can see, you can see you get like this angle. So just drop down a vellum post process, like so. And you have this apply wells, and you can see if that's on. Gold, right, all right. So yeah, I hope that you found this useful and uh, see you next time.